You need hustle, nigga, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Who gonna bring it to the table? Boss talk. Who your girlfriend fight? Check, check, check. This is Unique House. This is your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? You don't know my day all gone. Anyway, <laughs> don't forget to like, subscribe, follow us on social media, on all social media platforms. I mean, your Instagram, your Facebook, your TikTok. Even if anything that's new, we're going to be on it as Boss Talk Podcast 101. But if you want to see our full-length interviews, you got to go to our Patreon channel or our YouTube membership. That's how you get to see the full-length interviews before ECO start doing all these clip, 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 clip. I'll clip you to death. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I'm going to cut it up like a steak. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to feed it to chop, you chop, properly. Chop, <laughs> I'm going to chop it up. Hey, man, we got a very, very special guest in here today, man. She really don't need no introduction. We down here at the King of Diamonds. Man, they let us come in here. We done took it over. Boss Talk 101 Takeover. The King of Diamonds. We here. <laughs> Check it, man. ATL. Listen, man. Bianca Starr is in here, man. We're going to talk about Trust Nobody too. Yeah. We're going to talk about her career in singing. We just going to find out a little bit about it. Are you going to give us some in insight? And part oh, one. Yeah. She was in part, part one, Part one, too. part two. Mm -hmm. And maybe have a little special sauce to get y'all on what else is coming. That's why y'all got to watch. <laughs> I was so feeling you on part one. Let me tell you, the first time I saw you when you made that first scene uh -huh. and you were talking to him because how you were feeling because he didn't want to do right. I was feeling you. I <laughs> oh promise you, God. I felt you. So I'm like, and then you just stood up there like, <laughs> and you was mad. I'm like, look at her. Oh, thank you for that. I appreciate that because me and Demarius Harvey, he's from uh, Detroit. Okay. And when I tell you, we were going at it. Like, we were just like, go ahead and roll the camera because we were just, we, we just got for real with it. So it was a lot of improv on that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I was mad when, when he caught you. Oh. I was like, girl, why you had to do that? Oh, God, that's the way Steve O wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> you Man. know, it had a little twist on it, you know. <laughs> that's hard. But we'd like to let you um born and raised. Yes. In ATL. Milwaukee. Oh, ATL. ATL. I am an ATL baby, Southside what representative. Part? Oh, okay. Yes, yes, College Park, all that good stuff. Where Bubba Sparks at? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where he be at. When I don't I'm down either. there, he don't be there. <laughs> My other fault would be there, man. <laughs> not him. <laughs> so how you love ATL? I mean, this is my home. I don't care where I go in the world, anytime I travel, anytime I go anywhere. I love coming back to the A. When I get back to the A, it's like, whoo, I'm home. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I love to travel, but I just always love it here. I, I've met some great people in a lot of different places. But when I come home, it's just nothing like the ATL. So what makes ATL stand out the most to you compared to anywhere else you've been to? Other than it's just home. I mean, it's just like the people are so just authentic. You know, we authentically us. No matter where we go, you know, you can't hide the fact that you had that Southern hospitality, that you, um, you know, you just had that certain style and uniqueness about yourself. I, I just love it. And when I go other places too, they like, they can't tell I'm from Atlanta until they hear me talk. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, oh, I, I hear it. But, but I don't even hear it. Oh, some, people, some people be like, that's the one place, I, like Florida, and here, I can't really hear a certain, like, deep accent. I don't. Yeah, I mean, because it, it's so many people here from other places, too, that, you know, for me, I try not to be, I'm not try, trying to get too country on, you yeah. know, because I can pull it out. And then, yeah. and then that's shawty, that's yeah. shawty. I mean, and certain know, words, that certain, certain know, people now, when they say certain things, yeah. It's you a lingo. Like, yeah. It, it's a lingo, you know what I'm saying? You got to know what they talking about to know what they talking about. That's all. <laughs> so how were you raised with your mom and dad? Oh, well, I'm, I grew up in a single parent home my mother mm. super strong woman mama hey love you girl what's <laughs> up she said you don't talk about your mama enough I said no everybody see me on you see see you on me every time they see me look alike. we do and and uh, I, I learned so much from her she's such a strong woman she always gave me the room to be an artist mm. and to be free can and she sing she can and she can do uh, I'm talking about if she had a show or she could host a show I told her I said you should have been an actress all these things so she lives by vicariously through me so she always because you know some mamas would be like man you want to sing like why like you, 
Everybody who want to sing, go get you a real job. You know how you have the mamas? Yeah. Your mama would never like No, that. because she knew I had something. Like, mm. from a very young age, I started in the music industry when I was only, like, eight years old. Mm. Signed my first record deal, like, at nine, ten. Mm. So, she was all in. She was ready. She was like, yeah, my baby gonna be a superstar. We finna make it. And it's, <laughs> so, I've always just been on that path ever since I was young. Siblings? I do. I have a younger sister. Mm. Yes. And she lives in Dallas now. I heard y'all talking about Texas. Yeah. That's where we at. Yeah. She's a um, assistant principal. Oh. Yeah. So she is doing her, her administrative thing out there. So you frequent Dallas? I, I've been a couple times and I like Dallas. Okay. I do. I like it a lot. So I'll be back to visit her soon. So where was dad during all this time? Because it says raised by a single mom, yeah. but where's daddy now? Okay. See, me and my dad are in a great place now. But back then, we, let's, let's go back then. What we was it like back place then? Now. Daddy, I'm sorry. Not as, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to keep it real, though. Like, um, my dad did 10 years um, in prison. And so... How um, old were you when he went? Oh, I mean, I was baby. My mom was still pregnant. Okay. Yeah. So when I finally got a chance to meet him, my mom didn't want me to grow up in the prison system and doing all that. And I understand it was a decision she made, you know, that she didn't want me in, in jail going to see my dad. Go to see. Yeah. Were you so, ever angry about that? Um, I, I, I think I... I, I I had a feeling about it once once I got to make my own decisions. Mm-hmm. Like, I really, because, you know, I'm a mama's girl. So, mm-hmm. you know, she, all I saw was her making it happen and her doing everything that she needed to do for me to be strong. And so that's that's all that mattered to me, mm-hmm. you know, when you're a young woman, you know, and you see that. But at a state where we're at right now in life, um, where mental health is so real and mm-hmm. the situations that we go through is so real, mm-hmm. and it makes you stop and reflect on your childhood and, you know, what happened to trigger you to go through whether certain relationships why do you look at men a certain way mm-hmm. why do you always do you think that um, having your father not there or being in prison or not being able to see him affected any of your relationships and how you deal with definitely definitely um, I think I, I always had a wall up I always kind of you know wanted to be the strong one um, so I know that that affected me in a lot of different ways and you know just not really trusting like trust nobody mm-hmm, <laughs> going back to that mm-hmm. but just not really trusting people all the way um, and, and then like I said I started in the business as a youngster so I saw a lot of things going on you know behind behind the, mm-hmm, the scenes mm-hmm. you know that I was just like oh I can't that's unbelievable that somebody would do that to you or somebody would you know take your money or right. steal from you and, right. and so I got to see those things early on but um, I know it definitely it definitely um, had an effect on the way that I look at men and the way I look at people but it helped me write a lot of good songs I wrote a lot of good songs I about relationships imagine. did you have a stepdad <laughs> um, yeah my mom she she did remarry um, later later on um, by the when time I was older. like I was probably like a, I, was, I was a teenager by then I was like okay. about I think I was like 17, 18 when she got married again and she she married a, a radio disc jockey um, so they were kind of like Atlanta socialites oh. so you know it was fun so we always had fun together you okay. know what I'm saying so he was always doing like a little show or a little gig and I was always performing That's so it, it made things kind of cool for us to yeah. kind of keep that you know Relation, camaraderie yeah. relationship mm-hmm. kept it okay, going that's cool no the reason why I was asking if um, she had married because I know you said you were very not I put it in my own words it's not your words but headstrong <laughs> and uh-huh. you know so forth <laughs> and a lot of times when moms don't have like a man there to show a woman being submissive to him being mm. a certain way but she has to be both mom and dad and right. try to be you know so strong and whatever right. ended up not teaching the little girls how to be submissive so when they do find men to be partners mm. with they still feel like I'm running the household they butt heads with the men and not learn how to make a man be a man right. in the household you're talking about a stiff neck woman um <laughs> <laughs> now see so, You talking about a woman Who basically don't uh, She not fit to listen to no man mm-hmm. uh, uh, Because she don't need nobody mm-hmm. But at the end of the day you know, two is better than one. Yeah. You know, and but like, and like I just said, I said early on I didn't have my dad. Yeah. And now that I have him in my life, I realized that it brought everything together. That's now hard. that I have both, I can see both sides of it, and it made me a better woman. You yeah, know, made me listen better, made me understand better. Because back then, yeah, I probably didn't listen right. to a lot of men that were saying things. I'm like, mm-hmm. You know, until I, until I saw it happen, I'd right. be like, okay. You know, until I saw it happen, I'd be like, it. yeah, I can't. 
Because you had them coming at you left, right, and center because you're not an ugly young lady. You're well, a beautiful lady. So you. you had them all the time. Right, T.A., I ain't going to lie to you. It's a bunch, There's a bunch of, of them down around here. here. You know what I'm saying? It's a bunch Don't down here. Don't you stop. Here. Stop. Gonna be real. <laughs> they no. is at the gas stations pumping gas and no man there pumping it. It's different down here. <laughs> yeah, they, they all going to work in the day and mostly at night. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> Just because me and K.O.D., you not about to start this, okay? But, no, like, like, no. Women it, be hustling out here. They hustling. They got all kind of things that they do. All gigs, for, daytime yeah. and nighttime. Don't, don't play with it. Going back to that relationship thing, you yeah. know, uh, just being able to figure it out, I commend you for that mm -hmm. because it is tough when you don't have, like, your father and mother in the same home mm -hmm. or if your father is doing the parenting or the mother is doing the right. parenting, it's going to leave a, a schism, a split. Yeah. And, 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 I, and I commend you for figuring out how to bridge those gaps. Mm -hmm. But have it been tough on you when it comes to relationships? Well, there's no right way. <laughs> <laughs> what is the right way? Nobody wrote a book we on really, the right. We really don't know what perfect is. And yeah. that's the thing. Like, oh, we don't know what a perfect relationship looks like. We know that you go through things. And you learn that from an early age. Like, okay, that didn't. that's not the way my household was. So it, it's okay, though. It doesn't make it bad. It, it doesn't make it somebody else's situation better. Because when you look at a situation, some people that have both parents in their household crazy than a mother. Let me tell you something. My okay? kids don't like me right now, so I know that's true. Uh, <laughs> happily married for 20 years is a big lie. Like, let me let's be real with you. Uh, happily married for 10 years is a lie. It's going to be some tough times yeah. when you ain't happily married. Right. So I'm going to definitely give you the real on what I'm mm -hmm. dealing with with mine. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you what nobody else is doing. But not every household is like that because, like I told, I've told you in the past before, I grew up, my parents were married for what? 48 four? years. And <laughs> I never, ever saw my parents fight. Okay. I, I lived a sheltered life. Definitely. And I even as I got older now, I would tell my mom, you know, my daddy's passed away, so I wasn't able to tell him that. But I told my mom, I said, you know, we were raised in a generation where you let kids be kids. You don't you, you shelter them from a lot of things, okay. but that's bad and good. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. The bad part about it for me is the fact that it didn't make me grow up in a reality. Mm -hmm. I grew up, you know, thinking that yeah, once I once I meet a man, I love him, he loves me. That's all it, that matters. Right. I, we don't have to work towards nothing else. Mm -hmm. so we don't have to do a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, I ain't got to look out for certain things. Oh yeah, none of that st sort of stuff. So it, it blinded me towards problem and problem solving and right. all of that sort of stuff. Yeah. So people who are raised in a family where you do see your mom and dad have disagreements mm -hmm. and you see them come back together, yeah. you see them showing love, I think that's a great household. Right. And, 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 and a, lot, a lot of times when you see things, you try to, you don't want to emulate that. Mm -hmm. You want to say, okay, I've seen that before, so I'm going to try to do that better. I'm going to try not to do it like that because mm -hmm. that didn't really work out. But who's to say that's going to work out for you? Exactly. You know what I'm Real. saying? You're going to just try. You're going to try things. And as women, we have to be open to try things and, mm -hmm. and see what works for us because every situation is different. Every 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 relationship is different. So it's not going to work just like Keisha's relationship. It, it's not Your, your relationship is not going to work like that. So you got to be open to it. And I think I've always been open and I've always been just, you know, I, I, I love people for where they where they are, who they are, and then we, we see where it goes from there. You know what I'm saying? So that that's kind of where I'm you, where really. I'm you, I, I keep looking over at you. I, start, I keep thinking about that old fake nurse. You know, whatever. You know, it was a plot. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm tricking a nigga around this whole. You know <laughs> but I was loving him the way you, he was. You know. I, <laughs> you took him for who he was. You was very, very calculated with your moves. You know. What I'm saying? Well, y'all gotta watch Trust Nobody so you can see. Just I know because how I did not play coming. I promise y'all, y'all gonna get, y'all gonna get what you get. Y'all gonna get pissed I off. I did what not get. see that coming. That's all I'm gonna tell y'all. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's, it's it's really, you know what? It's a lot of drama. I like that about all the Trust Nobodies. It's it's a lot of flips, twists, and turns, and and you really just want to just stay in tune with it. How was it working with like uh, Fat Boy? Uh, SSE or how was it working with uh, Jamal gravy. Wood? Yeah, Gravy. Man, you know, everybody is just so much fun to work with. Um, you know, man, Fat Boy is funny. He keep everybody laughing. 
you know Jamal is very serious cat he's you know he takes care of business and it's just you know and I, I'm, I'm one of those people who I, I can make people laugh and then I I'm get serious you know I have to get emotional so I have to tap into my emotions so I, I just love that being able to bounce off of all of these different energies Man. everybody was so great everybody was I'm glad I'm glad that y'all like I said coming together how did you end up like even tapping in the fact that I want to be in this film. What 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 was that? Well, like, like I know Steve-O from the music business. Okay. And mm. so when he and he approached me asking me, could I play a character like that? And it was just kind of like, you know, Shell was just, the, she was the baby mama, you know, in the first one. In the first so, one. So, you know, she kind of has a smaller role in that one. And then as I as I looked into it, I was like, yeah, I could do this. Let's let's go. You know what I'm saying? This is be nice. I can get out to Milwaukee, see what's going on out hey. there. You know what I'm saying? And then I worked in the scene. I kind of worked in that scene where I sang at the funeral mm. cause yeah, I, I sang it I was like oh y'all finna have a black funeral ain't mm. nobody singing and you got that uh, you got yeah, to sing uh, she'll need to sing a song so I uh. jumped up and I kinda like put myself in that in that situation mm. cause I, you know I felt like she'll need to redeem herself a little bit you know cause they tried to you know make me look bad yeah. in that what first song one did, what song did you sing? Well, that well, that was at a funeral so you know I, I know. sang go uh, ahead I wanna hear gospel a little bit song, you go know ahead give it to me <laughs> Make a gift, make a gift. Why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows come? And why should my heart be lonely and lone? For heavenly, heavenly home When Jesus is my portion All right, y'all, look, I got to do a call on Moise Lord, forgive me, Lord <laughs> No, man, you need to complete more to record No, 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 man That's how they come Ned DeWino is saved You got that bit Ned know the scripture better than the people at the hey, church. Hey, that's what I'm saying, though. <laughs> you know, he don't judge us, though. You nah, know, he don't, love, he man. Does, that was beautiful. Man, that sound yeah. was beautiful. Yeah. Your I'm voice is beautiful. Thank beautiful. you. Man, that's hard, I man. I worked that in there, though. I was like, we need to have a black funeral situation. And um, as y'all know, we did the um, we did the theme song for Trust Nobody. So me and Gravy actually did that song together. Yeah. So when you get back I heard to that. It. Yeah. 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 It's only business. Don't take it personal If you stick with it You can't tell how far you go Cause you can't trust nobody When you out in these streets Everyone plays for keeps And you better know The streets are so cold, yeah Man, <laughs> stop that playing should, That should be like a stop theme playing. song For a lot of people it Because is. it's so true for a lot of and people And I wrote that Because wrote I wrote that We was in the studio and, and his the producer Godzilla Was in there playing tracks And I was like I think I let, Yeah, let me roll with that let, Let's do that And then Gravy jumped on the track uh, You heard I called him Gravy I didn't say Jamal Yeah, because yeah, that's, that's, that's the music He turned music back side. into Gravy, gravy. Yeah. Jump back into the gravy mode, and he got on that record. Man, we did that. That was man. Nice. Yeah, it's so yeah, dope like that, that, like on the, on the, on this. Because uh, when you look at Power, mm -hmm. and you hear Fifty and them do their thing, yeah. you remember these songs, mm -hmm. man. It's so important to get those songs in there. Yes. So because that's how it's gonna be a, a mark in history. Mm -hmm. It continues to be something that's flavorable when the movie comes. And on. I think more people should take action when it comes to the music and these movies because mm -hmm. I wrote that song for this particular movie. Mm -hmm. So my thing is like when you're doing movies these the film writers and, and directors if you're out there you're listening make sure you get you some good artists to bring that sound mm. together because it's so important you know mu music kind of carries the movie it puts you in a different mood mm. you know if they play that that booty shaking music mm. you know we finna go to the club mm -hmm. you know you know they're getting crunk and even with instruments yeah. we always like oh there's a scary part coming up you can hear the you wanna dun, hear dun, the strings dun, or the, dun, dun. yeah yeah you hear all sorts of stuff so the people music, know exactly mm -hmm. what type of emotion to prepare them Right. For. And so that's the thing. Like, take the music just as serious, you know, wow. because the music has a big part of it. And I commend a lot of these directors for, for mm -hmm. doing that and using, you know, our music and, you know, R&B, hip hop and all of that good stuff just to kind of pull the, the emotions and the scenes together because mm -hmm. it makes sense. So when did you, I want to say, get your first real big gig singing? 
Oh, because singing. I know that you were, <laughs> you know, doing gigs with your stepdad and stuff like that. All right. But I'm talking after that, like, uh-huh. and who approached you? How did it work? How did that happen? Oh my goodness! I mean, it's so many different. And how situations. old were you? Oh my god! So I the I'm, first time. Let's go to the first time. The first time. Okay, so when I was uh, when I was ten. When I was 10, we went and did, uh, we did audition for for Pebbles and, and for LaFace and all of this stuff. So we got, we actually had the same entertainment lawyer as Usher. So oh. we, when we were kids. So okay. we all used to just hang out and practice together. And you said do, we, so your sister showcase. was singing too? No, I was in a group called Two Hype and it was okay. me and my girlfriend Cherry. Okay. It was just two of us. So, you know, it was just like all of us were. Two Hype, I like that. <laughs> We got that name. Oh Lord, Kid and Play named uh, us. So Herbie Lovebug was a person, that, another person I met who does all the house party movies, and wow. he produced for Kid and Play and Salt and Pepper. And uh-huh. just that was legendary. And uh-huh. I was just a kid. I didn't even realize I was rolling with people that was so that was you know so legendary right. in the game at that time. But that's that's kind of like where it started. And then you know Dallas. When I worked with Dallas Austin, um, I worked with him on a, a documentary film that he did, and I did music mm-hmm. with him on that. And that was awesome. And you were still just 10? I know. When I, that when, time, how old were you at that time? Oh, at that time, when I did the movie with Dallas, I think I was about 21. Okay. Yeah, so, but it's just been so many different little instances mm-hmm. where I met so many great artists and people, SWV and R. Kelly and all different. When, I mean, because these are. R. Kelly? Don't, don't start. Look, R. I was, I was only 12 when I met That's R. Kelly. Oh, I, I, I just said, oh, hey. I just said, hey. And oh, I went out of the room. Oh, Nobody knew what was going on at that point. That no, was not going on then. That no, was not happening. No, no. You know when you say the name R. Kelly and you say <laughs> that, that you were that happening. young. Yeah, we, we just got to say, hey, R. Kelly, I've seen Aaliyah. She was in the room. Oh, she was in there? Yeah, she was there. Oh, okay. was she? She, she, yeah. About your age. <laughs> what the? Fuck? I mean, you know, we, everybody know the story. Look, I ain't even going to talk about it. But all I'm saying <laughs> is that was, you know, we were young, you know, yeah. and we were meeting a lot of artists and a lot of great people. And, you know, to this day, I still, you know. Talk Man. to a lot of those folks and, and it's all good. But the wow. fact of the the fact of the matter is that that's your history. Yeah. And, and it's not nothing that's bad. No. If you Do y'all didn't. remember Coed? Yeah, Coed was from Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah. And we were signed to Universal. That's hard. So that was probably like the biggest, the biggest. step. Because oh, okay. when we signed Major, we were like, yeah, you know yeah, what Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we put the first, when we put, uh, when we put um, Roll With Me was our single. Mm. And we did remix with uh, T.I., yeah. Oh. yeah, and that was like the first time he had heard himself on the radio was doing that remix with us. Yeah. And then he just took off from there. Like, wow. Yeah, because Atlanta, Atlanta was You ever awesome. worked with him again since then? I haven't worked with him again since Didn't then. Didn't see but him? Ain't I seen, seen him. him? Yeah, I seen pull him. Up, pull, tell him what's going Did on. Like, don't, don't, forget, don't, yeah. forget, don't forget <laughs> me. Like, it's dang. so funny. You know how we grow up. We yeah. look different. They be yeah. like, that, 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 that know, was you? That was you? It's me. Let's go. Man, that's hard, man. But but you you definitely on the camera, man. Your chemistry is great, and you Thank do a you. great job. Like, I mean, I believed you. That's one of the things I look at. Like, Thank do you. I believe her? Yeah. Yeah, I believe her. Okay. You know, and that's, that's the, that, that was hard. You know, so I mean, how how deep did you? I mean, you had a love scene in there. I can't say that, you know, a little, it, it real, a little bit. It was real. It was real. It wasn't a schematic. You know? I really appreciate BZ Jones. Thank you, <laughs> the director. And it's like, let me tell you something, because, you know, they have the option to make it one way or the other. You can get uh-huh. steamy. And yeah, and I think it's all based on the person. It's based on the actress. You know, how far you want, like, like yeah. you all say, tap in. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> how far you gonna tap in. But it definitely, um, it's weird doing a, a love scene in front of it because everybody's in the room. Watching you. Yeah. But, but you're supposed to, just like when I told you, it's good to put the headphones on because like you zone everything out you and you're just out. in right here. Right. You have to do the same thing with your character. You right. really zone everybody out with camera, everybody. Yeah, do everybody was so awesome. Everybody was so cool. And, they play my music so mm. my, my actual song Pressure is on the soundtrack okay. and it plays during that scene uh, so that helps so it helped when they played the music it was like alright let's do it <laughs> <laughs> but BZ Jones did a beautiful job of just making it look like a music video mm-hmm. or something really just you know mm-hmm. sensual and I really appreciate that because most music videos don't really have like you don't see love scenes that are so intimate with music videos like they skim you see a lot of tapping of the butt right. you know stuff like that but right. you don't see you no. Know, like I always tell a lot of artists I wish more music videos would be like 
a short clip from a movie. Right. They need to put a little bit more into it because mm -hmm. all, a lot of music videos become so generic right. where all of them look alike. The mm -hmm. shaking of the booty, yep. you know, the twerking, yep. the this, that, whatever's happening, uh, you know. Music and movies have a very close correlation. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't noticed, there have been more and more singers and rappers and that are in the music business mm -hmm. that are transitioning to, right. to, to the film because world. Because more money. And, and, I mean, and it's, it's a, it, and it's really easy for us as artists because I feel like when we're recording and when we're doing certain music, we're tapping into that right. emotion as well. Right. Whether we making it big or we, you know, making ourselves small, it's still acting. Mm -hmm. It's still mm -hmm. a, it's still a form of acting. So it's a it's a lot of fun. Like I actually am um, doing doing some stage plays come up. I've done some stage plays, but stage plays are really 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 awesome for me because once it sharpens my tool as an actress but it also lets gives me the the chance to be able to use my music and sing yes, and act they do at the a lot same of musicals time. that way yeah because right. you know when you're an artist you're you're on stage and it's like you're on you know what's the difference between the stage play and movie oh man it's a big difference because you when you're on cut. stage <laughs> you can't say cut <laughs> and when you're on stage people are looking at you and they might be giving you feedback or they might throw out girl uh uh no he didn't you know like and, it's, right. and, 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 and those are like little things that could throw you off but it just sharpens your tool and make you get right back on and just jump right back in there and it's it's it, it really makes you a great act that's why some of the best actors they've been on those stage plays they've been and to they Broadway go away. or they did a big film and then go back to Broadway right because it because it's so much fun too right. to be able to work with other actors like that and y'all y'all like feeding mm -hmm. off each other it's a lot of fun mm -hmm. but it's hard work wow. because it's a dance it's a dance I can imagine. Mm -hmm. yeah you like you gotta get your you're moving night right. after night. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me ask you something. When, with Tyler Perry, the, the, the studio and the, and the land being bought here, the movement being pushed oh, in, big, is right? that something that um, have it opened up doors for anybody that you know in the city here in Atlanta? Well, I mean, I mean, a lot of people that I know that are acting, you know what I mean? They are really getting their feet wet with, with a lot yeah. of shows that he's doing. That's okay. big. And that's a big thing. I mean, we, you know, salute to the guy right there for real because he is doing big things you and see, we need him. You see mm. about BET and Yeah, and, and that's BH1. what I'm talking about. He's doing big things and yeah. we need that, you mm. know, and especially just seeing more of us. We have so many stories to tell. We don't have to just tell one story. We got a lot of different stories right. to tell. So I think that Tyler is going to be a big part of us really, you know. He is our he's mm -hmm. ours and we keep it. Mm -hmm. Can you have it? Yeah. <laughs> so you didn't tell me so um so how did you transition from the music into the film? Okay, so my first time on film, like for real, for real, was Dallas asked me to be a character in, mm. in, a, in a movie that he was working on. It was called Eight Days a Weekend. And that's when you were 21. I, uh -huh, I was okay. in my 20s, and so, you know, I was a beggar, and mm. <laughs> jumping around. And what character was that? I actually played Bianca. He 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 thought I was so funny, and I was so, he was just like, you know what? Play you funny. You're you going to be Bianca in this one. And I played a girl from the south side of Atlanta, and she met me at the pool palace. Wow. Y'all remember the pool wow. palace? Wow. Yeah. Listen, man. And then we did the little dance and everything. Hey! hey. You know, hey, you had to know that that, that hey. was big that during was that time. And that's the thing about ATL, we dance. Uh, like, we, yeah. we have yeah. a little move for, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, y'all yeah, know yeah, it. I remember the show. show. Oh, All the stomp, <laughs> that little stomp dance, y'all was do one, two, boom. I'm like, look All at right. that. Y'all yeah. was tough, man. Yeah. So, hey, listen, and then, you know me, I, I remember I was down here, you, you little, use a little terminology like, I'm straight. I'm like, what is that? I'm straight. Yeah, and I'm still straight. Like, <laughs> Yeah, y'all different, man. That little old, the little old, they'll turn it on on you too. Sound like y'all from uh, from Jamaica bro speaking broken patois the mm. way they be talking. Mm. I be like, listen, I'm like, man, this nigga from Georgia somewhere. This don't sound like no. <laughs> Well, you know, everybody yeah. got their lingo. So, I'm telling so you. So let me ask talk. you this, man. Like, like, will you? Are you ready for another film? And what what type of film are you looking to get into next? Oh man, so I did another film while I was in Milwaukee called A Good Day for Everybody. Okay. And I play a different type of character in that one, and it's awesome. You guys need to go and see it. It's what character is that? It's a different TV. type of character. I want to hear about this character. I play a mother who lost her son to police violence. Oh. And so I, the, I retaliate, and the way I retaliate is it's the dopest storyline. I want y'all to go check That's it out. Hard. What's it called yeah. again? A good day for everybody. And it's out already. It's out now. It's on Tubi and Amazon. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so you had to cry. You had to fight. Oh man, had I had to, to go angry. crazy. I'm I, I really I get irate. So I, I turn into this mother that has lost it. 
she has lost all you know where to go how to how to handle things so being like broken like that and then having to tap into those type of emotions like if something ever happened to my child I was about to say do you have a child yeah I have a 10 year old and she is everything to me Mm. you know what I'm saying and and just thinking about that and I mean having to cry I mean it was it was I mean but having to torture somebody you gotta really watch it no that part isn't easy because it's a thriller so you gotta watch it right yeah I think about tap being a mom because there's so many times I watch a movie Mm. and I I tell people all the time I think these emotions come with age but also can come after you have a child yeah like you watch any movie that talk about a child dying or even when you watch the news and you see how a child got this or that yeah. you sit down and you start different. crying mm-hmm. and it's not even your child you don't know the person but because you're a mom you're thinking about that could have been my child right you know what I so mean so those those emotions were very easy to tap into in that moment but just acting crazy and doing yeah. all these other things it really was a different character for me cause you're not naturally like that no I'm not crazy I'm just asking you <laughs> I mean I'm just Hell you know no. everybody gotta look crazy <laughs> wow so I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take you somewhere else right quick like if you were, if I was a uh, um who was big that day Jimmy Iovine or somebody oh, or if Jimmy. I was uh, yeah. uh, one of these guys uh, mm-hmm. or if I was Tyler and I said I wanted you to sing me a song to, to prove to me that you needed to be in this film oh, or, in, or, or, or you needed this record deal what song would it be Oh, and, and, and how would you sing it mm-hmm. mm, that's I do that to, to people all the time to your vocal range that is a good <laughs> that's a good one so um, how would you sing it and what song would it be ooh. to show Hey, I I really can sing. That I deserve this. Mm. I had high hopes for us, baby. Like I was on dope for us, baby. Chasing after a high that I'll never get back again. But we turned into three long years. And it became painful and clear that we, we would never see those days again, yeah. So I guess forever, doesn't last too long, forever, doesn't last too long, forever, doesn't last too long, these days. Man, <laughs> did you have a vocal man. training? <laughs> I, yeah, I had yes, for, for, for a second, yeah. When I was in my group co ed, we had vocal training. That's I was about to say, man. because your voice is like you have a strength behind your voice, but then you'll go subtle and sweet and sexy in a minute. And I'm like, dang, I'm, you know, I'm the type of person you. I like to look for faults. Mm. So when, you, yeah. when you're singing, I yeah. heard that yell yeah, over there. She's crazy. But when you see me, I'm like, okay. I was trying to back up. I was like, what's she loud? What's she loud? Let me get back. No, I, I'm like, okay, let me hear if she cracks somewhere. Let me hear if she mess up somewhere. But, I, Ooh, but you were faultless, though. You oh. had no fault to your voice, and Thank I loved you. it. Thank you. Yeah. And as artists, we so critical on ourselves. You know, we so we so hard on ourselves all the time. And I think that's why it's so hard for us to post and do little things, because we always like, is that good? Is that yeah, good? I don't want to mess this You're up. Right. People are watching. People are watching, and they so critical. People are, people can be What really, about them comments? <laughs> Ooh, what about them comments? They can get mean. But, I, you know, I have been lucky enough where people haven't really come for me like that. But, you know, I haven't said the wrong thing yeah like so. I ask you let me, yeah. let, me, let, me, let me ask you something I want to ask you about uh, yeah, she, he asked uh, yeah um, I have a good one let me go first go okay you like okay. to get a hit okay. okay. you, in the stomach you're a very would you describe yourself as a very honest and outspoken person I do mm-hmm. okay so I don't know you mm-hmm. so um, are you an all natural woman I am no oh. work. I am all oh. natural. They this, all say that. To them no. two dots. Tell niggas see them two dots when you take your... Uh-uh. The, the dimples, everything's there. <laughs> everything. Okay. So, I'm just checking. I mean... <laughs> because you have some people who've <laughs> had work and it looks natural. Look, you have a lot of people... Here. <laughs> <I'm just checking. laughs> She's trying to like, let, let me let y'all see how this natural going on. <laughs> no two dots. <laughs> No, she ain't got them. I, she ain't got two dollars. I mean, nothing, nothing against people that have gotten work right. done. Um, I just think, you know, I want to be able to look at other young women and be like, you're enough. 
you know, you're beautiful just the way you are. Don't touch it. Don't do anything because it makes our young girls just really think, oh, as soon as I get this age, I'm going to get tongue tuck. I'm coming. Yeah, because but you're young, though. But as you get older, you know, gravity starts to take place and it don't always stay where it needs to stay or it gets out of shape and form and all of that. I'm not as young as uh, everybody else. You look young. But it's okay. That's what I'm saying. (laughs) Black don't crack unless you smoke it. (laughs) (laughs) My thing is just like, my, my mom still looks amazing and my grandma look good. Your grandma fine? Man, my grandma, she passed away about two years ago. Oh, damn. But she was 90, she was 94. She lived to be wow. 94. Wow. And beautiful. Just, wow. And she was the one who made me sing in church. She was mm. the one like every time we were having, my granddaddy built our church in, oh, Newman, yeah. in Noonan, Georgia. Mm. So he was the, 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 the um, he drove the school bus. He, he, he built the houses. He Did built eight houses for his children in Noonan. That's big. So my grandmother's house is still there and I, all those houses and they had land and so granddaddy so, had money you know what da- granddaddy Big money. granddaddy had some things going on <laughs> he was getting that that, that um, reparations or something he was getting that 40 <laughs> acres every year like he was just like you know but I'm telling you um, it, it's beautiful to come from a family like that mm-hmm. that is so close knit and we country you know mm-hmm. but at the same time we all are spread out all over man and you know when we come together we come together strong we gonna have our family reunion we haven't had it since COVID so this will be the first year wow. that we getting back together this year and we we super excited about it super excited about getting back together wow yeah man how can people get a hold to you if they trying to link up with you man the best thing to do is just hit me on Instagram y'all I am on Instagram I am Bianca Star wow mm. on and, platforms and uh, Top three artists of all time, dead or alive. Ooh. Okay, so you know I got to start. Top three artists of all time, any genre, dead or alive. Okay. Your top three. My top three. Number one. Number one is Whitney Houston. What about mm-hmm. Pat LaBelle? Whitney Houston is auntie to me. Like, mm-hmm. I, you know, uh, Tommy Brown was What's my- your most favorite song for Whitney? To- Tommy Brown was my, 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 my manager back when I was young. Really? Yeah. Oh, so wow. I used to travel with, with the Humping Around Tour and all that. Me wow. And, yeah. We used to jump on stage whenever we could. That's crazy. Yeah. But Whitney, I mean, come on, man. The, um, Which one? Who? Um... Was it Secret Love? you give good love. That is one. Yeah, that's, that's one of my one. favorites. You know, I found out. Oh, I love that one. Okay. Come on, give me that I've been missing. Come on now. Always on the run. Y'all know what it is. Man, <laughs> that was that one. Whitney, but Whitney was the truth. And yeah. that's the reason why I could always relate to Whitney because she told it like it was. Wow. Even though she was, you know, just Struggling pop star and, and she too. had all these lights and cameras. If she was feeling like a way, she'd be like, hey, I ain't taking no pictures right now. No, no. Yeah. Yeah, I'm eating my yeah. nigga. <laughs> wow. Back up. And I I just love that about her. She kept it, she kept it real and kept it honest. And she was the most amazing vocalist ever. My second, Brandy. And really? people people don't you know, if you don't right know there. if you don't know about Brandy, then you just don't know. Okay. So tell us Brandy, about- her vocal, her vocal range, her just just the smoothness of her voice. If you are an artist, you have studied Brandy. You have listened to mm. her, you have learned from her. Brandy. You know, Brandy and go, acting she is. Oh, and uh, all that. She but was that's all the first around. Brandy. All I, don't, around. I don't think we done got on here, right? All around yeah. artists, all around artists. Listen to her now and then then all of that. It's 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 the smoothest shit you ever hear. Number three. Number three. That's the, the hardest one. Mm. Cause I got so many I want to say. You gotta say Stevie. Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder. I had to mm. throw my mail in there because mm. I had a lot coming through my head. I was like Jasmine <laughs> Sullivan, Beyonce. I just had a whole you can bunch of it joy. all over. Uh huh. <laughs> I love it. You know what I'm saying? You just got Stevie Wonder, the greats, one of the greatest hey, to do it. Hey, love. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. See, I'm showing my age. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, so, man. I, so if you had to act as a, someone who is legendary, who passed away, you know, tell their story. Ooh. Who would that be that you would want to reenact? Oh, my goodness. It's funny you say that because I'm getting ready for a stage play next month and I play Billie Holiday. Wow, mm. that's big, that's big. And I'm playing her at her last performance before she passes. Wow. wow. So she is struggling. She mm. is, she's singing. Cause singing is life to her but she is struggling with her addiction with you know her demons all of that is going on at the same time all on stage wow. so that that's a that's gonna be a big one for me so mm. I, I really mm. I really am gonna enjoy this because I'm gonna act a fool and it's gonna be amazing um but you know I mean if I what had what song does Billie Holiday sing 
I know the name. I can't. It's just, she know I'm all of them. Right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. She, she know all of them. She got to to play the part. That's right. That's what? right. God bless the child. Oh, yeah. That's God is own. Hey. I, like oh, you put, I like how you put that's the accent God in there, too. Is you fly as hell. And the I can't stand you. We put it in this damn interview. I can't deal everything. with him. So no, but who did you want to act? Right, I knew you were going to say that because yeah. I heard you about to answer. <laughs> Don't think I forgot. Go ahead. You know, a lot of people didn't tell the Patty LaBelle story. Damn sure did. Patty LaBelle got a real interesting story. And, and she's like auntie to everybody. And like, she mm-hmm. ended with the pies. That's right. And she's still here. And she's still here. So, yeah, we ain't got to talk about her gone. Like, she's still, still, she's here. still here. She's a legend. Yeah. Like, like Jamie did Ray mm-hmm. before he before passed he away. Had. Played him and, and talked to him, best, and it, one of the right. best movies I think because of he that. was able to talk to him and, and find out what has made him do this. Mm-hmm. That's hard. But yeah. they're gonna say you light skin, so you can't play her. It's okay. <laughs> I get a little thing, okay. I'm being be ready. Man. <laughs> well, well, I guess y'all want me to end it. Yes, yeah, sir. Go ahead. Y'all ready to end it? Now it's time to say goodbye <laughs> to okay. all my boss talk friends. Man. I can hear her Bianca sing all Star, day. Your, you got a beautiful voice, man, and you talented. Does your baby sing? She does, and she acts. She's she's like a little comedian. Wow. I'm going to have my own kids stand up. Y'all she go hard. You should she have her on hard. Instagram doing little skits. And you know, I'm trying to figure all of that out, you know, about the That's Instagram. And do I want my baby on, on, on the internet. You know, internet? You know what I mean? Because right. once she on there, she on there. Uh, she ain't going, she going she on, on there. there. Yeah, you know, yeah, but yeah, if she going to get into way. acting, you want to get them started yeah. young. Yeah, but see, that's the thing. Nickelodeon. You got to have the Instagram and all that shit popping out. Like, you can't just be like, oh, well, I record and I do this. Uh-uh. They be like, oh, we want to see it every day. What you did? How you brush your teeth in the morning? Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? They, so, they demand it. Yeah. Every, then they want more because people giving more. So the more you give, the more they love you. Yeah. You got to go live consistently. I'm going to do better, y'all. I promise. Mm, I'm going to do better with going live and all that good stuff. Man. I check it, y'all. man. We love you. Bianca Starr is in the building. Guys. She's done Boss Talk 101. Yes, man. sir. It's going down. It's, going it's been down. another great segment of Boss Talk 101 where the bosses talk. That's and right. And we out.